It's 23 minutes after 8 o'clock. Type 2 diabetes has skyrocketed, specifically among black and Hispanic children and teens. That's according to the Journal of the American Medical Association. The number of people under the age of 20 now living with the disease has increased a staggering 95%. Wow. Joining me via Zoom this morning is Dr. Pauline Roll from Ascension St. Vincent's, a pediatrician. Good morning. Thanks for, having, for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me this morning. So, Dr. Roll, would you explain specifically what causes, to begin with, type 2 diabetes? So, type 2 diabetes is multifactorial. So, one of the things we know about um, type 2 diabetes is there's often, there can be sometimes be a family history. Um, it's also associated with obesity. Some years ago, you know, type 2 was only really seen in adults, and now we're starting to see it more in children. There are also prenatal exposures that contribute to this, um, such as um, maternal malnutrition, maternal um, gestational diabetes. And so there are a lot of factors that contribute to this. And again, the rise in obesity over the years has also contributed heavily. So do you, uh, do you think it's the obesity increase that is the reason that we're seeing this dramatic rise among specifically black and Hispanic children and young adults? Yes, that has been proposed as the most likely reason. Um, we've seen a steady increase in obesity amongst children over the years. And um, this study targeted years 2001 to 2017. And there was definitely an increase um, during that time period. And we're likely to see that as we go on. And so, yes, that is one of the primary driving factors. For, for parents who might be confused between type 1, which is typically you're born with, and type 2, two which can develop later in life, is type 2 preventable? And if so, could it be reversed? Type 2 is preventable. So um, with type 1, you often are not making enough insulin or you're making low levels of insulin. Um, with type 2, the insulin you're making is not able to get into the cells. The cells are um, basically resistant to that uh, insulin. And so um, one of the things that can do, be done to prevent it, of course, is exercise. And we talk about these things all the time, and it sounds like cliche, but it is indeed a way to prevent type 2 diabetes, exercise, diet, all very important. And some of the other things is looking at your environment. So we talk about social determinants of health, those non-medical factors that impact health outcomes, um, where you work, where you live, where you play, where you worship, all uh, play a part. And so you have to start thinking about your life, lifestyle to um, reduce uh, the risk of type 2 diabetes. So are there specific warning signs that parents need to be aware of then when it comes to their children? So, you know, Jen, um, a lot of the kids don't have any symptoms at all. Up to 40% will not have any symptoms related to diabetes. You know, the traditional symptoms we know about, increased thirst, weight loss, increased urination, um, more sleeping. Um, but some of the kids won't have any um, symptoms. And what my um, colleagues at Ascension are seeing is that oftentimes when they screen children who are obese, they find that they're, um, they have elevated blood sugar levels. Um, so that starts the process of working them up for diabetes. And so that is what we're seeing more often um, is that they don't have uh, symptoms and they happen to come into their doctor's office and we screen them and we find, oh, they have abnormal labs. And so that starts the process of having that conversation. Which is why it's so important that you make sure that you take your child for their yearly, you know, physical and yearly appointment to the doctor so you can have that conversation about whether or not blood work is needed. Dr. Roll, thanks for your time this morning. Thank you.